Enterovirus D68 is an unusual virus uh, in that we rarely see it. There have only been a small number of uh, cases that have been reported over the years, and so already that makes it uh, distinctly unusual from other uh, enteroviruses. The other thing that was unusual about this outbreak and called our attention to it was that we had all these kids coming in who were wheezing a lot. They, many of them had abnormalities on their chest x-ray, uh, and yet most did not have fever. The profile of the child who appeared for uh, care uh, typically was a child under the age of five who had a history of either wheezing in the past, so they may have had asthma, or they had something called A-to-P, which means that they tend to be a very allergic kind of child. Uh, and that represented about three quarters of the kids. Uh, but a full quarter of the kids had no background uh, that would have suggested that this virus would have made them uh, wheeze uh, or have difficulty breathing. If you look at previous outbreaks of EV68, and again, they were much smaller than this one, uh, and they were uh, restricted to uh, a few cities, uh, whereas this one has covered uh, several states, uh, what they found in those other outbreaks was that some around 20% of the infected individuals were adults. So the way in which uh, people are treated is in the hospital is mainly to uh, help them with their breathing. They may need extra oxygen. They may need a bronchodilator, something like albuterol. Uh, they may need some fluids because maybe they're having trouble uh, uh, drinking uh, because they need to work so hard to breathe. So there are easily over 100 enteroviruses uh, that circulate uh, across uh, the U.S. over the previous years. Uh, and it would be very difficult to create a vaccine, but I guarantee you someone's working on it. We think it's really important to document what's going on so that, that way we can further understand the manifestations of this virus uh, as well as uh, start to uh, anticipate uh, if it's present in a child. So one of the things that we're doing to try and contribute to that is describing the natural history of it and the population that we see here at Comer Children's Hospital. The CDC has collected now uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 to 300 cases, uh, and so we can look to have that published uh, in the coming year. Uh, we expect to get our information out a bit sooner. It'll be on a smaller group of patients, uh, but we have the ability to be able to move fast enough to get that out so that others understand this outbreak uh, a little bit better uh, than they do up to this point. I think at Comer Children's Hospital we can be really proud uh, of the teamwork that was uh, on display in recognizing and moving quickly to better understand this outbreak. Most parents they really understand and know their child so you're going to be looking for uh, difficulty breathing, uh, a, a baby who uh, can't take a bottle because they have to break to breathe, um, uh, a child who has asthma who's just worse and they don't seem to be responding to their usual treatment plan on how to handle uh, an acute episode. Uh, all those are things that parents should look for. Uh, one of the most important things always is wash your hands. Wash your hands. This way you can protect other people in your household, you can protect yourself. And teach yourself, teach your kids. Show them by example the importance of coughing into your sleeve rather than coughing into your hands because it's the hands that really spread most viruses.